Uh, my name is Roland Rosenthal. I'm a fourth generation farmer here in the central San Joaquin Valley of California. And I farm super high density olives for extra virgin olive oil. The olive season basically starts the, the, the day after harvest. Uh, we apply a, a, a copper solution to the trees, which is organic. Um, and it seals up all the wounds, wounds from the uh, mechanical harvester. Um, after that, we kind of let them pull the water off of them, uh, let them lay through the winter, kind of harden off so they can, they can get through the freezes real good. Um, come springtime, uh, we start our nutrient program and irrigation program. Um, through the spring is when bloom uh, comes on, usually around uh, late April to early May. Uh, depending on the year and the and the temperature. Um, after that, we we prune in the summertime, uh, so we don't have to worry about uh, diseases getting into the uh, cuts that we make on the tree. Um, after that, it's basically still more irrigation, um, some nutrient uh, uh, application, and um, after that, we pull the water back so the oil can actually start building in the olives. Um, after the oil starts building the olives, we wait until they're approximately 18 to 20 percent fat and we start the harvesting process. This starts all over again from one year to the next. Same thing. <laughs> so the super high density uh, fashion of planting is you've got more of, think of more of like an olive vineyard than an olive orchard. Um, uh, we're, we're planted here uh, uh, five feet by 12 feet where a traditional olive orchard is planted 20 feet by 20 feet. So we're, we're crowding up the trees, we're putting, putting them in more of like a hedgerow um, so, we can, so we can mechanically harvest these, these, uh, these olives without having, so we don't use any human, no human hands touch them. So it's a very food safe product. Um, and so that's the difference between the, the super high density and the traditional uh, olive orchards. These olives planted here are Arbequina. Uh, they're more of an earlier variety. Um, they come off um, usually in, in you know, late October to early November. We mill at the mill um, three varieties, typically three varieties. We mill Arbequina, Arbasana, and Corneki. And uh, the, the, the variety that comes off next would be Arbasana, and then the variety after that would be, corn, would be the Corneki. Um, all have different flavor profiles, um, all have different yield characteristics. Um, however, you know, we could, we blend uh, those oils together for a certain flavor profile by a, a client wants. The, the typical olive harvest, uh, we, it consists of um, heavy machinery. We have uh, broad olive harvesters or dedicated olive harvester machines that come and pick these olives. Uh, they, they straddle the row. They have rods in them that, that beat both sides of the tree. And then there's a conveying system that is incorporated in the machine that conveys the olives up to the top of the machine and then over to the row into a gondola. And then that gondola ferries the olives out of the field and into the trucks. Um, our days can, can, can consist of 20, we've, we've worked 22, we've worked 28 hour days. I know there's only 24 hours in a day, but we've had to do that to beat out some, some weather and, and those sorts of things. Um, it's only temporary. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, so you just have to keep, keep moving and keep moving until you get to that, that light. So after the olives hit the truck, uh, the truck drives the olives to the mill. Um, all of our growers are within uh, 50 to 60 mile radius of the mill. so. Typically, we can have those olives there within just a few hours of them being harvested, and they can be milled and have fresh, fresh oil in the tank within three to four hours of, of harvesting. When the, the olives arrive at the mill, the truck gets weighed for heavy weight. Um, it gets pulled around to our gantry crane. It gets dumped into the hopper. Um, from the hopper, uh, the olives are conveyed up into what we call a scalper. And what that is, it's a, it's a double deck vibratory table with a grid on top. The olives fall through the grid and all big sticks and twigs go across the top and get sorted out of the olives. Um, from that machine, the olives go to our, our uh, photo eye sorter. Um, and what that does is get, it gets more trash 
uh, mummies, which uh, mummies would be a, a piece of fruit left over from the prior year. Um, anything that's not color oriented with an olive, it gets kicked out with our color sorter. Um, from there, it goes to our rinse table. Um, we just we and we just rinse with very fine mist jets. We're not uh, we're, we don't go through a water bath, so that that water stay. It's, they're getting rinsed with fresh water um, all of the time and not getting not getting tumbled in a dirty water bath. Um, from there, they go up and into our into our crushers, where that's where the paste is made, and that paste gets pumped into our malaxers. Um, the malaxers are basically is where the oil and the flesh kind of come together and where the character of the oil is made. Um, all the flavors um, kind of get melded together and the oil picks up the flavors of the olive in this process. Um, usually, typically, we malax for about 40 to 45 minutes um, uh, under heated jackets, but no, no, uh, nothing over 83 degrees. Um, from there, it goes into our decanter, and that's where our, the solids and the liquids are separated. So you have, you have different phases and densities of products, and that's how and it uses centrifugal force to separate the oil, the water, and the pumice. And so you've got pumice coming out of one end, you've got water coming out of one end, and you, or the other end, and you've got oil coming out of the other side of the water phase. So from there, that oil, that we're pulling out of there gets pumped over to our vertical centrifuges and it gets polished. They call them polishers. So it takes out more sediment and, and that sort of thing. Um, from those centrifuges, the oil gets pumped over into a holding tank. It gets held there for approximately maybe one to two hours and then we go through and we go through a filtering, filtering process. So the oil is ready, ready to be used right then and there that day, we can bottle it the same day we're, we're milling it if we choose to. The standards in California are so specific is because we want to bring you the best product possible. Um, and what we have to do to do that is we have to have our oil chemically tested and it's got all these different parameters that it has to pass chemically. And then, then we have to go, it has to go to an organoleptic panel, which they taste it and deem it extra virgin. And what they're, what they're looking for are taste defects, whether you have like a frozen, a frozen olive or you have, maybe you, uh, somebody had a infestation of olive fly or, or some of that effect. They, sometimes, sometimes you have fermentation uh, in the milling process that adds an off flavor to oil, to olive oil. So we have to pass these and it has to taste clean. It has to taste nothing but extra virgin olive oil. It can't have any other off flavors with it or anything. So that's what we have to go through to bring you, uh, and that's why our standards are so high, to bring you a, a superior product. We, we filter on the fly as we're, as we're milling. So all of those volatile materials get taken off the oil right away. Um, it, 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 it makes for a better, long sh longer shelf life for the product. Um, it's better for all of our clients um, in the long run. Um, so that oil, can typically be bottled. It goes through, uh, we, have a, we have a bottling line, a 2400 bottle an hour bottle, Bertolasso bottling line. Um, and the, that process is we, we have, we manually put, manually put um, bottles on the line. That bottle goes into the machine. It gets rinsed with nitrogen. So we have, a, we have two shots of nitrogen in the rinsing process. We have a, a big burst of nitrogen, which blows out any kind of dust or packaging dust that's in the bottle. And then we have, it goes through and it goes to a small poof of nitrogen, which basically displaces all oxygen in the bottle before it goes into our, um, our, our filling turret. Once it's in the filling turret, it gets filled from the bottom up in the bottle. There's a cane that goes down and fills it from the bottom up. And then it goes around. And then right before we put a cap on the bottle, we put a little nitrogen cap on top before the cap goes on. So that, that, that it will be the freshest oil you could possibly get uh, before the cap goes on. And from there, it goes into our labeler front and back label, uh, lock code, best by date, uh, harvest date, and we always put a harvest date on our bottles, and then it goes into the case and, and palletized. The flavored oils that we make are co-crushed. We take a fresh Meyer lemon or a blood orange or garlic or basil, fresh, all fresh ingredients, and we co-crush those together with, with the olives. It, it runs straight through the crusher just as simultaneously with the, with the olives, and that oil gets Gets, picks up those flavors in the malaxer, 
picks up those flavors of the of the blood orange or the Meyer lemon or the basil or the garlic, um, and and that's what infuses infuses the the flavor into the oil. And then we it goes through the same process through the decanters and through the centrifuges, um, and through the the filtering process too. Typically, we put a two-year shelf life on our olive oil made today. Um, it had it have a two two-year shelf life. If you were to go and purchase that bottle and open it and start consuming it, then you start the degrading process rapidly um, by, by adding oxygen into the bottle. So I would, I would prefer you consume that bottle within three, three to six months um, of opening it.